Hi again. So today we'll be discussing the imperfect tense. The imperfect tense is used for actions that have happened in the past, but were continually happening. I'll give you an English example um, of a simple past verb that happened definitively and an imperfect verb. Okay, so um, perfect, also known as simple past. I'll give that example first. Sorry, my pen wasn't working. Just wait one second to let it start up. Uh, okay, so here's an example of perfect or just uh, simple past. So, um, she ate. So it happened definitively in the past. And now I'll give you an example of an imperfect, and hopefully you'll be able to see the difference. And uh, she was eating. Notice how the um, imperfect seems to be continually happening in the past, while the perfect is more definitive. Um, so the imperfect tense, um, I'm just going to go ahead and cross that out because we're talking about the imperfect right now. But the imperfect can be translated as um, was blanking, as we just did. Uh, another one is used to blank. And the third and final one is kept on blanking. So now that we know how to translate it, let's find the endings and connecting vowels. And the good news is that the imperfect is somewhat easier to form and remember than the present tense. Uh, so let me start by giving you the endings for the active imperfect. And again, we'll just make our chart singular, plural, one, two, three. And now for the endings. Bomb. Boss. Bot. Bamus. Excuse me. Botus. And finally, bond. And these are the endings again. Okay, so now that we have our endings, I'll show you how to find your stem. And it's actually very simple. All you have to do is, um, I'll write it right here, to find stem, you take your second principal part, I'll abbreviate that, and you cross off, off last three letters. I'll abbreviate that too, I guess. Um, and now, if you remember, you have to place your a connecting vowel between the stem, the stem right here, and your endings. So, um, all you need to know for well, okay, if you remember, the present was actually pretty complex, but the um, imperfect connecting vowels are actually much simpler. And I'm going to go ahead and make a chart first, and these are all the conjugations: first, second, third, third io, and then you have fourth. And basically, um, there's just one letter per connecting vowel, and there's no special rules you have to remember. So that makes it really easy. And I'll write them in different colors so they stand out. And um, it's A, E, E, I, E, I, E. So these are the connecting vowels for, um, here, let me circle the stem, the, oh, excuse me, connecting vowels, and the endings. And these are the three components you need to um, form your imperfect tense. So, as you can see, no special rules or, ex or exceptions. And the passive is formed the exact same way, um, except they have different endings. That's the only difference. They have the same way to find the sem and your same way uh, to find the connecting vowels. And let me just uh, write down um, in parentheses CV or connecting vowel, uh, same for active and passive. Okay. Um, so, imperfect passive endings are a combination of the imperfect active and the present passive. And you'll see what I mean once I write it. But um, let me just scroll down a little bit and make a new chart. Here are the endings. Singular, plural. One, two, three, and these are the imperfect, passive,
passive passive endings and it goes bar baris botter bomber bomini bontor Okay, so the passive will be translated. Let me write this down in a different color so it stands out. Um, imperfect passive will be translated um, in one of three ways. Was being blanked. Second way is kept on being blanked. And finally, you have the third used to be blanked. And I'll give you an example of a conjugated verb uh, just so you get the idea. And let's go with copio copere. And let me write that down uh, so we can conjugate that. Copio copere kepi coptus. And it means to capture, but for now we're just uh, conjugating. So let's uh, go ahead and see. Let's cross off our endings, and we're left with the stem. But before we do that, we will see that the first word ends in eo, second word ends in ere. We go up here, and we know that um, it should end in ie. because it is the third IO. So we know that IE is the connecting vowel. So let's draw our chart. One, two, three, singular, plural. And first let's write down our stem. And we see above that it is cop. Okay, then we can go ahead, have IE as the connecting vowel. And just keep on writing that down. It goes everywhere for the imperfect. And then finally, we go to our imperfect passive endings right over here. And we just copy them down everywhere. Bar, baris, botter, bamor, bamini, bamini, and bonter. And there you have it. Let's just go through them one by one. Uh, copier, excuse me. Uh, copier bar, copier baris, copier botter, copier bomber, copier bomini, copier bonter. It's a mouthful. Um, so there you have it. Those are your imperfect active and passive endings. And again, um, these are your. Um, these are your active endings, these are your connecting vowels, and again they're used uh, for both active and passive, and then uh, this is how you find your stem, and finally these are the imperfect passive uh, endings. Thank you for watching!